All right, hey gents, Carl here with Tactical Rifleman. Uh, you, you know the deal, when we do our videos, shoot, move, communicate, we cover tips and techniques. We don't like sharing tactics per se because you know we, we don't wanna help the bad guys overseas, but we teeter on that line because there's a lot of stuff that concerned citizens need to know to make them capable citizens, right? And, and there, there's a lot of reality to that. So, But if you want real tactics, you gotta sign up, come take a class at Tactical Rifleman, and me, Z, the rest of the crew, will get into tactics. Now, that said, when you're doing one man close quarters battle, whether you're a law enforcement officer working one or two man team, or whether you're a homeowner, you're clearing your own household, there's a lot of close quarters battle techniques and tactics that can be modified and applied on one man uh, as at the one man technique level. What caught my eye a few years ago was the Israeli technique of basically pieing doorways and working. Uh, a lot of their techniques boil down and apply to one man uh, clearing very, very easily. And because of that, we brought uh, Emery here, former Israeli special ops guy, and great guy, new, new member of the Tactical Rifleman team, and he's gonna take us through all of this. So look, here's the deal. The first point is, by definition, when you're by yourself, uh, you don't have a team where you can flow and do things quickly. You don't have your buddies that can take other sectors and other corners for you. Uh, so you're at a huge disadvantage. Not only do you not have your guys, but you're also on the move. Right, you're on the move, whatever it is, or whoever it is that you gotta hunt, uh, or, or even if you're not hunting somebody, let's say you're in a shopping mall or whatever, you're trying to clear your way out, you still gotta clear your way out, right? So, uh, you know, we'll talk about a few of the basics, um, a few of our, our, our biggest considerations, and, uh, and I'll show you some of these techniques. So, the first thing is, I like to explain things in terms of event horizons. So, when you have a black hole in the sky, Right, that's a, essentially a super, super mass uh, and it's condensed down to a tiny little piece. It's got a huge mass, so it's just got a huge gravitational pull. It's sucking in everything, including light rays, right? The reason I'm explaining this is because around a black hole, there's a line. There's that line, that perimeter, where on the inside of it, it's just black, hence the name black hole. On the outside of it, you can see everything behind it, right? I like to explain everything inside of a CQB type setting as event horizon. So a doorway would have, and I'm stripping this down to basics, forget where the door is and all that. The doorway itself is gonna have three event horizons, right? There's one angle here, there's this angle here, and there's this top angle. The top angle typically concerns us a little bit less. We've seen cases where people are up here, there's crawl spaces or whatever. Right now, I'm not gonna be concerned with that. Right now, I'm talking about just clearing your way uh, and slicing the pie here. My muzzle is typically, almost always, gonna be pointed in the direction of my highest threat, right? So if I'm walking this way, it'd be really silly for me to walk with my gun pointed that way, right? So naturally, my gun's gonna be pointed in my most dangerous direction. If I have to swing it around because I'm trying to cover or clear another sector, uh, the, my muzzle will follow my eyes. Here in CQB, when you're doing this by yourself, I'm actually gonna break away from that habit of having my muzzle follow my eyes all the time, okay? I'm gonna actually allow myself to scan the room with my head because I can do it so much more quickly. Okay, this way I can really get a lot of information into my brain while that muzzle is still going in the direction that's really, uh, that's really kind of freaking me out more than anything. I'll get into slicing the pie, here's how we do it. Um, I'd like to make a contrast here between working in a team and working by yourself, right? When we're working in a team, what I can allow myself to do with a well-trained team is really go in, pop that door fast, start clearing, and we can use speed as our security because we can really overwhelm that place with some violence of action. Here, it's gonna be the exact opposite, okay? I'm gonna take my time, I'm gonna move slow because by definition, I gotta move here, right? When I move, I'm shooting not as accurately, uh, and I'm also making noise, right? So even these little foot noises, right? These tiny little things, that's gonna tell people, that's gonna project my presence to the people in the next room and potentially even the next room beyond that, okay? If we got open doors. So we gotta mind our feet. 
we'll get into a little bit of how we slice the pie here. Now look, slowness can be your security if you do this right. Okay, I'm gonna show how to slice the pie, then I'll explain why we're doing all this. So as I come up to the door, I have, uh, I have two immediate corners that are essentially gonna be the last thing I'm gonna be able to get to and clear. Those are my most dangerous corners. That's where bad guys tend to hang out. Okay, by definition, they're setting an ambush for me. I have to assume there's a bad guy in every single corner in this building until my eyes have cleared it with my muzzle. So I'm gonna get to this door, I'm gonna actually pop a look into the opposite corner. Okay, now I'm seeing all the way into the opposite corner. I haven't necessarily cleared all the way to that corner depending on the length of that running wall. Okay, but I've minimized it to probably five or 10 degrees of dead space on the other side of that door. Everything that I've already been exposed to technically is cleared, okay? So I'm gonna start working in a button hook direction right now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reset my feet. My feet right now are in a shooting position. I'm gonna reset them so that they're now, uh, my toes are pointed towards the wall. Okay, from here, this is a lot of footwork. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna spread my front foot out. My toe, my front toe is always pointed inside of this corner, okay? What that's gonna do is when I bend this knee and straighten my right knee, okay, that's gonna bring all my upper body up over this foot. Okay, so I don't have to lean over like this where I'm crushing my lungs and I'm not a stable platform. All I'm doing is bending that knee, okay, and I'm minding my event horizon. I'm gonna suck this knee in, shoot this one out, small little steps, and I can clear this way. We'll show an example here in just a minute of what it looks like from the opposite side of the door. I'm now getting to the last step, okay? The last step, my foot is gonna stay inside of this threshold. Okay, my foot's never gonna step in unless I absolutely have to commit to that room. This is the only step that's gonna have to be snappy, okay? So it's gonna look like this. I'm gonna do it slow motion. I'm gonna check that corner, and then I'm gonna shoulder check into the opposite corner. If I'd like to, I can also switch my feet. I'm still outside of this door, and I got muzzle all the way down into both the corners. This does take, uh, this does take a little bit of work with your knees, so work on it at home. You know, you can, you can do it at home dry or just with your finger. Whatever it is, make sure these mechanics work. What you're trying to do is not expose more of yourself into that room than you're exposing to your muzzle. So I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like with me coming in through this doorway. I'll come in from the other side. I'll show you what it looks like. First, I'll slice it incorrectly. Okay, my body position is gonna be incorrect. The way I dissect these angles is exactly the same. The way my body functions is gonna be different. The first time, you're gonna see essentially half of my body show up at once. You're gonna get a, lot, a, a big target here to shoot at, okay? The second time I'm gonna do it, I'll do it the other way. What you should be seeing essentially is my trigger hand, okay? And a little bit of my head with my one eye because I have to aim, I have to look down my sights, okay? And, and you'll see the shoulder and it'll get cut off here. So let's show you what that looks like. Okay, so I'm coming up to the door and I'm slicing, I'm slicing, I'm slicing, okay? And I now see the camera. You should be able to see half of my body, okay? This is still reasonable slicing if you're lazy, okay? If you're not lazy and you're okay with working your knees, here's what it's gonna look like. Okay, I'm at the door and I'm slicing. Another step and here comes the third step. I see you, I get a full shot. You should not be able to see more than this little zipper tab on my, foot, on my uh, pants. That's essentially what we get for working a little bit harder, right? We put in that little bit of extra work, it's awkward at first, you gotta learn it. You wanna learn this stuff, you know, you, you gotta go uh, sign up for a class. We do this stuff all the time. From here, I'll talk real quick just about this method uh, is my adaptation of what we invented in Israel for the military. This started off as a team dynamic. Uh, we ended up teaching this to the whole army, you know, to, to all the you know, infantry and all that because it's good and it's useful. Um, and, it, and it's really not complicated. You can do the same concept as a whole team uh, and, and we've now adapted it to work solo. The reason I bring that up is it's important to note that in the Middle East where, this, where we came up with this, most of the walls are concrete. They're either 20 centimeter cinder block, right, or they're actually poured concrete. Here in America, unfortunately, greatest nation on earth, but we got shitty buildings, 
right? All this stuff that we got in our house, it's crap. It, bullets go right through it and it's not gonna protect us. However, we're still using this concealment as cover. What does that mean? That means we know it's not bulletproof, but if we can surprise the people in there and take a good accurate shot, I should be able to kill everybody in that room that needs a lead diet selectively without being exposed to them. Okay, this system actually gives you an easy out. What is an out? An out means that if I'm on this door, okay, and I go in, my natural flinch reaction, if I see someone who's pulling a gun at me, I might take a shot, but I'll probably take my out. My out is gonna be back into here, okay? There's two ways to do the same slicing. You can do it from up close to a corner, or you can do it from a mile and a half away from a corner, in theory, right? You're not gonna really slice a pie uh, with a radius of a mile and a half. Here, the reason I like being close to the door, my out is a half a step away. All I have to do is lean and my out is complete, okay? From here, they may be able to shoot through this wall, but they're not gonna know where along this wall I am. I can go ahead and set a counter ambush for these guys. CQB, especially by yourself, is a very complicated, high stakes game of chess. There's doing your best, there's making sure you get all your angles covered, and, uh, you know, and, and use your slowness when you have to as your security. Having said that, there are certain places, if you have multiple fatal funnels, uh, like these doors that we have here that are one next to the other, and I'm coming up to these doors, sometimes my only choice is gonna have to blow, po uh, is gonna have to be to blow right past them. You know, and you're not just gonna start running. This is an active shooter or any sort of hostage rescue type of thing, right? We're still very calculated. We're still taking our time, but sometimes a dynamic entry into a room is just necessary. Other than that, if you think about this, if I run into this room by myself and I have two or three guys with guns, as good of a shooter as I might be, there's no way I'm shooting three, four people in this room who are pointing guns at me before one of them gets a bullet in my center mass or, or anywhere on my, on my pretty body, which I like to preserve with as many holes as I have right now. So that's essentially the idea of slicing the pie. There are many ways to do it, um, you know, and, th and this is really fit for everyone. My purpose here is to give our, uh, you know, our, our responsible gun carrying citizens here in the States essentially a, a good way to get yourself from point A to point B safely uh, when you're under duress. A big point here is don't get number one syndrome. Number one syndrome is something that we have in the military. Everybody's aware of, uh, of this concept, whatever your verbiage in your unit is. When you're running through a building in a stack, oftentimes the first guy, number one, okay, the number one in the stack, which is a number that changes all the time, right? Whoever's the front guy, that's number one guy. That guy, this is just how our brain is wired. This guy has a tendency to want to go and attack the enemy. So he's just going to be on, on his warpath. And oftentimes it takes number two to kind of slow him down. Here, that's even more important. Don't get caught up in number one syndrome. Okay, take your time. Taking your time is also going to allow you to use your ears and your other senses, right? So if I'm coming up on this door, I can spend a minute sitting right here on this side of the door, right? I'll take a good defensible uh, position where I can essentially set an ambush for a bad guy, maybe try to draw him into me. Uh, that way I get the static easy shot, right? And I'm gonna listen. Like I was saying, this is very complex stuff, right? You're gonna have to play this over and over, practice in your home, really come take a class. That's where we're gonna go over all this stuff. You'll learn how to do it, you'll learn the body mechanics, what things to look for and all that. I'll just recap real quick in a few little bullet points. The first thing you need is to keep your muzzle in the direction of your highest threat, okay? Keep that muzzle pointed where you think that bad guy's gonna be or come out of. Two is while you're doing that, keep your head on a swivel, okay? You're by yourself, you're responsible for all angles around you. This is horrible stuff. So you gotta keep your eyes everywhere all the time. Um, three, let's use cover and concealment to our advantage, okay? If you don't have cover, you can still make use of concealment in the same way that you do cover with just a few little tweaks. Don't rush, okay? Don't just run into a room like a cowboy. Hold off, make educated, calculated decisions, okay? Now lastly, use your ears, use your senses, use your brain. You can get stuck in a place as long as it's defensible and you can send a counter ambush. 
then you can sit there and think about what you're gonna do. Don't blow into a fatal funnel and then get stuck on this fatal funnel and think, okay, what am I gonna do here? This is not a place to think. That's a place to think outside of here, okay? Thanks for watching. This is Tactical Rifleman. Go ahead and click the subscribe button, hit the bell, and check us out next Friday. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything. If you like the shirt that we're wearing in the video, you can get it in our store.